November 9th, 1989, 30 years ago, the wall fell. People in the East looked forward to the future, to a new world, new possibilities and Western products. In football, it was similar. In November 89, East German clubs looked forward to Western TV money, new sponsors and duels with Bayern and Dortmund. As did players like Manchester City legend Uwe Rösler, then a 20-year-old East German international. We watched our idols on television for years, for decades, and then we played against them. Or GDR talent Stefan Freund, who benefited from the change, not just because he later won the Euros. I rented straight away a penthouse flat. Can you imagine a penthouse flat? The people from East Germany saw great times coming. But things turned out differently. Most companies in the GDR were shut down. Millions of people lost their jobs. Today, 30 years after the fall of the wall, not a single team from the East German top division in 89 is part of the Bundesliga. The last GDR champions Hansa Rostock are stuck in the third division. GDR record champions Dynamo Berlin play in the fourth tier alongside Lok Leipzig and Erfurt. They all formerly played in Europe. And even worse, Steffen Freund's former club Stahl Brandenburg currently play in the seventh division. 30 years after the fall of the wall, it's pretty clear to see reunification in football failed. So how did East German football become what it is today? Rainer Kalmund, he came over with uh, with a few guys and bought the best players. That is a good example why in the end it was difficult to survive for the East German clubs. Leverkusen manager Rainer Kalmund sealed the first East-West deal just one month after the fall of the wall. He signed Andreas Thom, the best GDR striker at that time. Dresden star Ulf Kirsten followed and Matthias Sammer, later Ballon d'Or winner, went to Stuttgart the same year. Bundesliga clubs came over and headhunted all the talent out of the East. And the East clubs didn't really got paid the money they should have deserved to rebuild their clubs and their structure. The dream of the Golden West turned out to be a nightmare. The GDR couldn't compete in the free market. East German clubs were all parts of GDR-owned companies, the players paid by the state. There was no know-how in terms of marketing, sponsorship or contracts. Regional sponsors in the East didn't have much money. And most of the Western companies didn't want to invest in East German clubs. I think the investors from the West were interested in other things, probably mainly in real estate or firms that bought up trusts. Back then, no one was really getting into investing in football. Michael Kölmel invested in many East German clubs in the 90s and 2000s. He saved Union Berlin from bankruptcy and helped Red Bull Leipzig to rise. But some of his and fellow investors' ventures failed. Dynamo Dresden, for example, were ruined by a West German businessman who later went to prison for embezzlement. Many clubs simply made wrong decisions with the money. They didn't know exactly what they were doing and they signed players or coaches from the West for way too much money. Of course, there was bad management, of course, a lack of investment, of course, a lack of infrastructure. But how a club in the East should know how to run immediately a football club? When we have never exposed to do that before. So the lack of commercial skills in the East was a big factor in why reunification in football failed. Another reason for the downfall of football in the East is that the fusion of the East and West German leagues simply was not fair. In 1991 there was still the West German Bundesliga with 18 teams and the East German Oberliga with 14 sides. Instead of merging these leagues, all 18 Bundesliga teams were allowed to stay in the top division and only two East German teams could join. A further six GDR teams were relegated to the second division and the rest went directly from the first East German League to the third All-German League. For example, former European Cup winners Magdeburg 
or record champion Dynamo Berlin that played here in this stadium. It was pretty unfair. They should have expanded the Bundesliga. Then maybe the damage wouldn't have been so bad. It put the East back 10 years. The East football family joined the West German family. Basically, West Germany just won the World Cup. So you basically you have to take what you get. Uwe Rösler had a difficult start in the first reunified season. He struggled at Dynamo Dresden. In 92, he unsuccessfully went to the West German club Nuremberg. It was another level of football, another level of scrutiny, uh, media to cope with, um, contracts to cope with, also a little bit a society with elbows. Mm. You, you had to look out for yourself. Mm. In the East, we were more, everything came from a collective. Mm. We was more team. Uh, in the West, you needed to expand your elbows to survive. Now you have to look after yourself, you have to learn, and then you realize a little bit more how far the East German side was away from the, from the West German side. Despite these differences, Steffen Freund made it in the West. He won titles with Dortmund and Germany and ended up as a fan favorite at Tottenham. Same for Uwe Rösler at Manchester City. Between 94 and 98, he scored 50 goals for the Sky Blues, becoming part of their Hall of Fame. But meanwhile, their former clubs collapsed. Stahl Brandenburg went bankrupt in 1998. Dynamo Dresden left the Bundesliga in 1995 with millions in debt and never came back. So, 30 years after, GDR football is dead. But wait, is it? East German clubs may seem doomed, but in some ways, the East is very much alive. Take the current German youth development system. It is undoubtedly one of the best in the world, with specialized football schools and an outstanding scouting system from the age of 10. All implemented in the 2000s by East German Matthias Sammer. He basically copied a lot of things that already happened decades, 20, 30 years before in the East. And I think whole football Germany had benefited that, uh, from that and uh, the golden years came after that with a lot of young talent. Apropos summer, if you take a look at the three decades after reunification, who were the best German players? 90s, Matthias Sommer, born and raised in Dresden, GDR. 2000s, Michael Ballack, born and raised in karl marx stadt GDR. 2010s, Toni Kroos, also born and bred in East Germany. A lot of East German players played later for the German national team. There is a character and a power that uh, I think it comes from the overall situation in East Germany. East Germany was a poor country, not the nicest area to live. Now. It's fantastic to live there. And then you realize, oh, why not to, to play for Aue now or to play for Dresden again, Leipzig now. With Red Bull Leipzig, there's finally a team from the East that can really compete with the big teams from the West. I think for the Leipzig people, that somebody comes in and, uh, and give Leipzig the chance to participate in the Bundesliga and participate in the Champions League and they have an option to fight for titles. Unification failed but the East is still alive.